Jack Kidberg, the Whitechapel Windmill, dominated both British and American boxing in the early 1930s. Like no other British born boxer before or since, born of immigrant Russian Jewish parents in 1909, he grew up in the East End of London, gaining a fearsome reputation for scrapping in the streets of Whitechapel. Soon he boxed his way to success in Premier Land and the Royal Albert Hall. Jack Berg went to America and in a whirlwind three year campaign defeated the very best that American promoters could put in the ring against him. His classic battles with Tony Cozzarelli and Kid Chocolate gained him worldwide fame and in 1930 victory over Mushy Cullen made him world junior welterweight champion. Jack Berg won the British lightweight title at his first attempt in 1934 and went on to accumulate a career of total of well over 200 fights. Corbett was too much of a handful for Berg. On their first fight, he wrote, I had a bit more experience than Berg and when I saw what a troublesome customer he was likely to be, I restored a trick that was probably a new one to him at this stage in his career. Whenever we clinched, I grabbed Berg's arms and gave his bicep a determined pinch. After a few rounds, as expected, his arms began to ache and he lost snaps in his punches. By the end of the fight, his arms were so tight that he could scarcely raise them to protect himself. I received the verdict over a puzzled Berg. Never so long as I've lived will I regret that fight. Amada was chunkily built, short and broad, a bobbing, weaving fellow of the type you'd never meet in England. I went in at him, standing straight with my head held high in true English style. He crouched too low to be touched by my stylish left lead and in return hit me from all angles. He gave me a terrible, terrific pasting for three rounds, nearly knocking me out. When I came back to the corner after the third round, Whitsy hissed in me ear. Now listen, kid, if you're going to insist on carrying up your jaw right by, I'll crack you on the chin. I thought you could fight. In the fourth round, Berg cast aside his English style and began to throw punches with either hand, non-stop street fight fashion. Amada never won another round and Berg won his first fight in the USA. So what you're doing is you're just basically giving him the chin and he's bloody hitting him. At the end of the second round, Kid Chocolate went towards his seconds as if to say, you can't hurt me. Midway through the third, he caught Jack Berg with a right hand shot that shook the little man to his toes. He turned his head around, he was facing me and he moved to his right. As I rushed with my right hand, I went forward he was so quick, he put a pop shot right on my chin, turned my head around. And by the seventh round, however, the crowd was booing chocolate for holding as Berg trying to rip loose the world of Cuba and rough onto the road. The Londoner attack was so fierce, so fast and so continuous that chocolate began back when he was snort to kinch. Joint issues and pulled back all what was worth. A simply terrific slam in short with Berg Handing away to the body, the chocolate stabbing to the face, and also sending in rasping, rasping uppercuts. No mistaking that the blow was below the belt and it sounded like a smack on a kettle drum, but Berg was fully protected and his action in getting up following the knockdown proof. Even though the blow landed below the belt, it did not anticipate uh, catapate him. And he said, <laughs> As Berg started slowly, tentatively, just as he always seemed to do in big contests, unable to decide on the correct course of action, Misler was able to catch him with solid lefts and rights, hard jolting punches which, with which he clearly won the first two rounds. Unfortunately, at the end of those two rounds, Berg was still there, apparently unhurt, while Misler broke at least one of his hands. As Berg stalked out of the third round, Misler, unable to counter his rushes, started to thunder and was helpless against Berg's bullying, battering tactics. 
Berg, sensing the confusion of Misler, grew in confidence and with each sand, less than a year ago, Misler had the correctness of style of Driscoll. Yet here he was, a nervous, fluttering trio. His ordered boxing job, his punch non-existent, his eye and timing hopelessly out of illusion. 